theories. That's not I don't the believe same any thing. of them, but you're allowed to believe what you want, but that's not what's at hand here. Okay. Now another thing, just to make you aware again of just how much they're programming your mind. To you, it looks like a man that said that's not the issue at hand here. You need to start learning their language. Their language is dual meaning, which goes hand in hand with neural linguistic programming. The issue at hand here, what he's doing is directing the professor to look at his hand. Now why would he have the professor look at his hand? Well, if you look at his hand right now, you see it is what you've been told is the OK sign, right? Well, let's show you what it really means. The OK symbol, as you see right here, means 666. For some reason, 666 has some sort of control over the mind. Now, it could have something to do with the beast computers many of you have read about. It's sorcery. It is putting a hex on somebody. It is subconscious symbolism that somehow affects some people. It doesn't affect everybody. But he's using that, and he was directing the professor to look at his hand to use sorcery on him. It's not that one thing will work. They try to use as many combinations of things as they can. But that is a symbol, and it means 666, and that is why he told him to look at his hand, or the issue at hand here told his mind subconsciously to look at his hand. Do you see? And that is what just occurred there. That's not what's at hand here, meaning you are not allowed to believe what you want. And that also tells the population looking at him, because remember, he is also talking to people that are watching television. And so they are also instructed to look at his hand subconsciously or take notice of it subconsciously. And when he says you're allowed to believe what you want, but that's not what's at hand here, he's saying with the 666 rule over your mind, you are not allowed to believe what you want. And that speaks to your subconscious mind and programs people to not think. And that's what it means all around and all together. That's what just happened. Of them, but you're allowed to believe what you want, but that's not what's at hand here. The issue well, is, is whether or not science. you, with your bizarre theories, are the best, well, I think you have the, the bizarre theory. You think it was 19 bucks? Second. Okay, again, saying his issues, his views are bizarre, right? But the reason he puts up his pinky there is because that is the weakest finger. That it would imply a small penis, uh, not a potent man, using that in reference to him saying that he is impotent, that he is bizarre, that he is weak, and that he is of the pinky. And that's why he chooses of all fingers and all gestures to speak about his theories, he puts his pinky up. And these are all subconscious sorcery methods. Again, sorcery is not some guy wearing a magician's hat. Part of sorcery is speaking to and manipulating the conscious mind from the subconscious. Well, it's a question of science with your bizarre theories are the best. Well, I think you have the, the bizarre competent. theory. You think it was 19 box second. guys with box cutters led by a guy on dialysis in a cave in, Afga in Afghanistan? That's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, that's the craziest conspiracy theory of all of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, I wish I had the Twilight Zone music. Now, here's my next... See, all he can say is something to discredit him. I wish I had the Twilight Zone music. And then the people watching the televisions that say, yes, that must be weird. Twilight Zone music is weird. And the the honest and credible news reporter is saying that about him okay now you see that all the neuro-linguistic programming is starting to get to the professor he's starting to screw up his words he's starting to screw up his concentration he's mispronouncing that's because there's a lot of negative energy being focused on him interrupting his thought process so you can see how he's starting to screw up his words but he's still holding you know with all of that working against them and being unaware of those techniques he still holds his own, but you start to see it get to him a little bit. Yeah. I mean, that's the craziest conspiracy theory of all of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, I wish I had the Twilight Zone music. Now, here's my next question. The issue <laughs> okay, that is at hand here, you're entitled to have your opinion. I don't really care what you believe. But if we're talking about a captive group of students in a class... Again, making a bored face as if he's nothing. He's the pinky. He's lower than low. I really don't care what you believe. But if we're talking... 
about a captive group of students. Okay, first he, he said that they implied that he wants his students to regurgitate. Now he's holding them captive, which goes hand in hand with what? Terrorism, hostages. He's subconsciously painting this professor to be what? A terrorist. So not only have they discredited him, but people are already getting in their minds that uh, with this neuro linguistic programming, that's now you understand what neuro linguistic programming is. Neural brain linguistic speech programming, programming the brain with speech via the subconscious. Dual meaning. I don't really care what you believe, but if we're talking about a captive group of students in a classroom, the question we've got to ask. Hang on a second. Well, they're they're sitting in your classroom, and, and you have a position of authority. I'm a, I'm wondering. It's what the question is: whether or not you're the most competent to teach them. And most people think you're a nut. Now, this one should be obvious. Isn't he a person that's in a position of authority? And isn't he about as incompetent as you can get, as far as love and honesty and caring about other life forms? yet he turns it around because people believe what they hear and what they read so if he says it first and that's a big part of this is trying to say things first before somebody else can say something then it seems like they will always be on the defensive and that's the whole point is to keep the professor on the defensive all right and saying that uh, he is detrimental to his students when the truth is Fox News is incredibly detrimental to you just in this short clip I'm showing you here and people are watching this all day long and most people think you're a nut most people think well, you're actually, a no, nut they don't. worth we just, to. We just uh, had a poll here in Madison and we found that 90 percent of the respondents at Channel 3000 poll uh, said that I should be allowed to teach only 10 percent well, said I shouldn't that's the and 60 percent 60 percent I don't think what 60 your views are. agreed with me about right. the questions I'm raising about 9-11 60 percent of the respondents I, I think uh, you're, you're in the minority right speak I don't think this is the proper forum though for people that hold extremist views like yourself okay first of all when he says no no like that what he's doing is he's programming the television viewers collective consciousness to disregard the results of that poll he says no no and then your mind says no to the information he just gave these are just little tricks he slips in there and most people think he's a nut what but see people watch that of course and they store that in their mind as fact of course most people do not think he is a nut but if he says that he programs anybody watching this television program <laughs> hint hint that everybody thinks he's a nut so I will too to fit in where did he get that number how does he know most people think that he's a nut think about it <laughs> I they don't he just says it and then the professor has to respond to that he's totally disrupting the whole interview so it appears to people because time is moving by that there's actually an interview going on here but it's not it's only about disrupting and discrediting and programming your opinion okay first of all I used to live in Madison Wisconsin and I can tell you that people did not think that he was crazy it was the television that began to program people to think that he was crazy again now extremist views like yourself now they already set the stage in your mind or the viewers mind before he brought that up in the beginning when that first reporter took his hands and whipped him over to the left side of his shoulder to subconsciously say that he's an extreme leftist he's on the extreme left so now they're reinforcing that telling you to believe that he is extremist that these are extreme things well Fox is 666. Look, I mean, just look. Look what they're doing. Look what I'm pointing out to you. Once you start to understand the dual meaning of neuro linguistic programming, things become crystal clear to you. About the right. questions I'm raising about 9 11, 60% no, no. of the respondents. I, I think uh, you're you in the minority. Right speak. I don't think this is the proper forum, though, for people that hold extremist views like yourself. Reasonable no, you people guys are extremists. Reasonable people. Now, notice what he did there. He took his hands and he gestured them towards himself and said reasonable people while pointing to himself. Therefore, your subconscious and your conscious mind is shaped 
to see Sean Hannity as the reasonable person. They're always using gestures against you in coordination with dual meaning in things they say and direct meaning. So again, reasonable people, all he has to do is point to himself, and that's a subtle, nonverbal gesture to make you associate being reasonable with Sean Hannity's point of view. He's programming your mind. So now after you have associated being reasonable with Sean Hannity, and when he says people think, he points out or opens his hand so you are to think. See, reasonable people, he points to himself and then opens it up to you, think, you shouldn't be allowed to teach this class. We can do a better job. People will be programmed by that. Reasonable no, you guys are extremists. Fox are News extremist. is the biggest bunch of extremists on the I planet. But and reasonable you... people see you as an extremist, and I don't think you're the most appropriate guy to teach that class. My, but my guess well, I don't is think you're the most appropriate guy to be on the airwaves spewing you. your venom. And the professor got it right. You can see the look on his face. Uh, he says, spewing your venom. That's exactly what he's doing. The problem is that you can't get all of this out in an interview. For example, say I was on an interview like this. They would be doing all the same things to me. All I would be doing is calling attention to everything he's doing, and then he would sit there and argue with me. Nothing would ever get discussed. This is how they take advantage of people. Look how long it's taken me. Do you know this clip is only like two minutes long normally? But just to describe two very short minutes of media to you, look how long this is taking. That's the problem. That's why I haven't done it before. Because I can sit here and explain it to you, but you need to open up your eyes so you can see it for yourself because it all happens way too quickly. If you try to explain something that happens in a three second period, if you're not educated on that if you're not aware of it it will go by way too fast before you can bring somebody up to speed to understand what's going on this is why I had to break it down for you but I still can't do this with everything I see because this is everywhere this is common this is always going on and it just you need to educate yourself but you need to become aware again dual meaning neuro linguistic programming gesturing association of concepts and beliefs to link them, anchor them in your mind, to misdirect your perception, your beliefs, and your ability to perceive reality in general. Class, my, but my guess well, I don't is think you're the most appropriate guy to be on the airwaves spewing you. your venom That's my uh, throughout this country. Uh, I think you guys should be taken off the airwaves oh, because you, you are the guys who are... Uh, we don't want to silence anybody. For, uh, you teach will do anything. Uh, Thank, Thank you, Professor. Time. Coming up, we'll have a... We don't want to silence anybody. That's exactly what they have just done. Though you heard a lot of speaking going on, nothing was able to get out into the open. They completely took control of this poor man. And he's brave, okay, to get out there, lose his job, and to speak the truth. And they hound him like bees. They, they're using techniques that are hidden, that are sorcery, they're of sorcery in their nature. They're hypnotic, they're, they're using negative energy, manipulative techniques, childish argument techniques. And so you've seen a lot of talking, but nothing got out into the open. And you see how nervous they made him? Why? Because he couldn't, he had to keep dealing with their techniques and he couldn't express the truth. And this is how anybody who tries to get on the media to speak the truth is manipulated. And that's why most don't even bother. They don't bother because they would just get into an argument. I mean, what's the point? The expert that I've seen at this is Stephen Colbert. He was one of the biggest disinformation agents out there. He'll get somebody in for an interview and just completely distract, disrupt, discredit, and there is no interview. That's what I call Stephen Colbert's interviews. Uh, they're, they're not interviews. They're Stephen Colbert using techniques to distract and discombobulate basically so this is why you don't get the truth in the media even if people do get a chance at airtime they will be interrupted misdirected hypnotic suggestions to the audience that are watching it you just can't uh, people that know the truth won't even try they won't even try to go on the mainstream media and people that do it ends up like this so until that is addressed then nothing will ever